Welcome back to The Stranger Within by Kimberly Tracy. We left off where Hannah just remembered that after Jenna left that night that she was missing, there was a strange car that she'd never seen before parked down the street. She wonders if this could somehow be connected. Chapter 2. The limo approached the funeral home. There were people already gathered outside, even though the service did not start for at least an hour yet. The people were mostly young teens around Jenna's age. The temperature was still increasing and would continue for a few hours yet. Hannah wiped the sweat off her forehead with the back of her arm. Her legs stuck to the leather seats as she tried to readjust her dress. Hannah took a deep breath as she held on to the eulogy tightly. It was as if somehow part of Jenna laid in those words, and in holding them, she was holding a piece of Jenna, a piece she would never let go of. Henry cleared his throat and followed by asking, who are all those people? Henry is not around the girls that often lately, so he was not sure if Hannah or Ma knew everyone. After a moment, Hannah looked closer to see if she recognized anyone. Looking for family, friends, or neighbors, Hannah squinted her eyes as if to get a better look. She doubted that her Aunt Joan and cousin Ava would show up since they skipped the limo ride already. If they were going to come, they probably would have met at the house earlier like the others. Perhaps the school shared the funeral arrangements for students, suggested Ma. This could be possible, but Jenna really did not talk to many people. Besides, could the school do that without asking permission first? There must be another way, Hannah thought. After all, she knew that her ma did not share information with the school because she wanted it to be a private event. Ma had hoped for just the family and Jenna's closest friends to be there. Jenna had only a group of four close friends. Could they have shared the information? Speculated Hannah. There must have been at least 20 people gathered out front. Where did they all come from? Hannah wondered. As they drove past the main entrance, Hannah continued looking out the window but still could not recognize anyone. She knew that if she had been a couple years, she attended the school, but she still should recognize Jenna's friends at least. Who are all of you? Hannah pondered as she scanned the crowd. I'll pull around the back, the limo driver said through the small connecting window as he began to turn around the building. Again, Hannah tried placing that voice, digging deeper into her memory, still unaware of where and when she heard it before. Hannah thinks back to that night again, watching Jenna take off in her pink Under Armour jogging outfit towards the river. Once more, there is the car running on the side of the road. Hannah tries to dig deeper to recall detail, any detail about the car. At least she sees the car more clearly. It appears to be an old burgundy station wagon. The car was fairly dirty and her memory fuzzy, so she cannot be too sure. If only she had more to go off of. Stupid memory, thought Hannah. Work already. The limo came to slow stop at the back entrance of the funeral home. Luckily, this door was not crowded by people waiting to get in, probably because the door was a service entrance. How did the driver know about the entrance? Was it well known? Hannah questioned. Although the ride to the funeral home was not too far from their house, Emma was already getting restless and wiggling around. The one out, cried Emma as she squirmed in her seat. Esther leaned in to unstrap Emma from her seat, and eventually she was free to roam in the limo. Emma quickly went over to the bar top and started to reach for the cabinet handle. Esther swiftly swooped up Emma in her arms and headed towards the door. Once they were out, Esther and Emma sat down and grasped a hold of her hand. Let let me grab that for you, Henry offered as he gestured to the box that Ma had on the ground by her feet. She gladly handed it over to him. I'll take this inside so we can set up. Within a moment, Henry was already outside the limo waiting with the rest of his family. Thank you, Ma almost whispered. Her voice was so low and quiet. Mom was already worn from the day, and it had just begun. She must have been tossing and turning all night, too. Hannah did not understand how people could sleep during the grieving process, especially with so many thoughts running through your mind. She understood that it was not the same for everyone, but even after the accident, she could not sleep for a while. Not a problem, Henry responded from outside the limo. Mom slowly slid off the seat and rose to her feet.
Feeling warm herself, Ma fanned at her face with her hand and let out a big breath. She exited the limo with the water bottle in hand. With the day's prediction being over 95 degrees, with the fill of 102 degrees, she would need it. In fact, everyone should have taken a water bottle. Hannah held on to the eulogy closely as she began to rise from the seat. She could hear her legs on suction from the stick of the, her sweat to the ladder. This day was becoming even hotter than anticipated, and the peak hours had not yet come. Hannah exited the limo, closing the door behind herself. She could not have been more than four feet away before the driver pulled off to the parking zone. Still unable to recall where she knew the driver from or even who anyone out front was, Hannah tried digging into her memory again. She truly thought she was in a nightmare and wanted to wake up badly. It seemed like she was screaming, but no one could hear her. Henry led the way through the service entrance and towards the main desk. Everyone else followed closely behind, not sure if they should even be walking through this area. The narrow hallway had two doors, one on the left labeled employees only, and two doors on the right that appeared to be restrooms. The hallway led out to a beautiful foyer that had three connecting rooms. In the foyer was a stone fireplace with large plush sofas surrounding it. There were pictures on the wall of calming nature scenes. Although they were trying to make the place inviting, nothing could cover up the sorrow of this day for anyone. Hello, how can I help you guys? The girl behind the desk asked us. She must have only been about 19 herself. The girl was a little on the heavier side. She wore her hair up in berets. Henry set down the box on the ground and walked up to the desk. Esther and Emma stayed near the box and played a game of peekaboo. Ma and Hannah were still heading towards the desk before they heard Henry respond. We're the family of Jenna Stone. Henry cleared his throat, then continued as he gestured towards them. Mother Autumn and Sister Hannah. As swiftly as his hand returned to his side, Ma had reached the desk. Hannah stayed back a little to give Ma some privacy with the lady. She knew that paperwork needed to be signed, documents presented, final decisions discussed, payments collected, among other things. Who knew that dying involved so much? Hannah wondered as she began to drift off. Hannah thought back to the running station wagon, trying her hardest to recall any other possible details, attempting to dig deeper again. Hannah searched her mind for a make, model, or driver this time. The more she tried, the harder it became. The image was still too fuzzy for her to make out. Hannah rubbed her eyes as if that would clear the image in her mind. She thought that if she kept trying, eventually something would come up. If only she had more time to process everything. Hannah could see Jenna's ponytail bouncing as she began running down the street. She tries to focus on the station wagon again, searching for more details. Hannah continues to imagine the path her sister is running on, trying to recall if Jenna ever ran past the station wagon. Hannah continues pushing her mind for more information. Just like a prisoner, though, her mind will not give up any more information. Ma was talking with the girl behind the desk for some time. Ma paid the rest of the funeral costs, collected papers for work bereavement, and talked about the setup and teardown. Luckily, this funeral home was kind enough to help you clean up afterwards. When she finally finished up with the business of the funeral, she called Hannah. Sweetie, let's head out now. Ma noticed that something was off when Hannah was not responding to her. Ma walked closer to Hannah and tapped her on the shoulder. Hannah jumped a little from the shock as she was deep in thought. Um, sorry, Ma, I was just... As she trailed off, she began to move towards the doorway. Henry, Esther, and Emma had already walked outside to find a seat. They wanted to make sure that if Emma was too fussy, they would be able to make a quiet exit. The seats were set up in six rows with about eight chairs in each. They were simple, simple white folding chairs, like the ones you would see at a wedding. Again, with the celebration things, thought Hannah as she looked at them. Ma picked white ones to match the Easter lilies that would be laid out on top of the casket. It didn't matter to her that it looked more like a celebration than a funeral. Ma wanted it to be as beautiful as Jenna was. 
Jenna had always said that she wanted to be laid out under a blanket of stars. Hannah knew that she pulled this concept from a song, but nonetheless, Mom planned for an outdoor service. The outdoor space had a gazebo, small koi pond, and many trellises covered with morning glories. It was a small step up that could only hold about 50 guests, even though they did not plan on 50 people coming. They still wanted it there. Given the crowd out front, it might be a good thing that they went this route. Henry set the box down by the chairs in the front row. It was hard for Hannah to look at the gazebo, knowing that Jenna was laying in the casket underneath. Hannah stayed towards the side of the chairs, looking at the trellis. She knew that Ma would need help stringing out the pictures once they agreed on a spot. Hannah thought that hanging the pictures just to the left and right of the gazebo on the trellises would be nice. The string could easily be tied to each trellis, forming a clothesline which to hang the photos. Hannah walked towards her ma to share her thoughts. That's a marvelous idea, Hannah, she exclaimed. Ma seemed a little too pleasant given the circumstances of the day. Maybe Ma's just faking it too, Hannah thought. Ma reached into the box and pulled out the string. Why don't you get started putting the twine up? Ma stated while she handed the string to Hannah. She took the string from Ma and headed it towards the right of the gazebo to get started. Hannah carefully measured the distance between each of the trellises before cutting the string. She then twisted the string slightly before making her first knot. In a matter of minutes, Hannah had the right side strung up and ready for pictures. She moved to the left side of the gazebo to begin hanging the string. Following the same process as before, Hannah quickly was started. After a few minutes, she had completed the first part of her task. Next, she would start to close pin the pictures up. That would be the difficult part, seeing all the old memories they had made. Then Hannah thought of the fake smiles that Jenna had showed all over her face recently. Hannah walked over to the box and grabbed a handful of pictures to start hanging up. Do these photos truly represent Jenna? Hannah thought. Ma, do you care what order the pictures are in, she asked before beginning. Hannah started to thumb through the pictures while waiting for Ma's response. She saw run from their camping trip last spring. Jenna was wearing one of her two-piece swimsuits, a pair of jean shorts, and aviator sunglasses on. She was in goofy poses with a smile across her face. Was this a real smile, wondered Hannah. Not at all, dear, Ma responded while fondling the prayer cards. It must have taken Ma days to decide what to put on the cards. She could not very well put the truth that her heart was broken in a million pieces, and long, though she still has loved ones near, she lost one that was close and dear. Ma saw a small table near the entryway that would hold the cards and guest book well. Hannah began hanging up the photos. As she viewed them more closely, she noticed somewhere when Jenna was just a little baby, others from her school years, and many from the past few years. Jenna had recently received a new camera, so some pictures were not yet developed. Hannah saw one of her favorite photos. Jenna was sitting on Hannah's bed wearing a shirt she just purchased at a concert. You could tell Jenna was overtired because she looked slapstick happy in the photo. Her eyes were buggy and her tongue sticking out to one side of her mouth. Hannah smiled slightly at the memory, then continued to hang up the photos. She had just finished when Mom walked up to her. It's almost time to begin. The priest would like to speak with us one more time before beginning the service today, Mom explained to Hannah. They both headed off to see the priest while Henry double-checked everything for Mom. The priest asked questions about what Jenna liked and disliked, some of her activities, and other things of that nature. After some time, Ma and Hannah had returned. People were already seated for the service at this time. There must have been at least 35 people at the service so far. Hannah was slightly relieved because that meant she would not have to make small talk with people she did not know. Hannah and Mom headed to their seats in the front row. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to this celebration, announced the priest, trying to grab the audience's attention. Celebration? Yeah, right. More like a tragedy, Hannah thought. The priest continued to talk to the people while Hannah drifted in and out. Jenna died at a young age. Her death does not go unnoticed, the priest continued. Those were words, died, death, they hit like daggers to her heart. Why well, can't you use the word past, Hannah puzzled. After all, past sounds more soothing than death. 
It was a good thing that she would get to share some memories she had of Jenna with everyone. She could tell them the wonderful person her sister was that most people did not get to know. Hannah wanted to ensure everyone could see her sister the way she did. Jenna loved to do many things in her spare time, like Hannah drifted off as the priest continued giving his speech. As John 3.16 says, she could not understand what he was talking about. All Hannah could do was think about the eulogy she was about to give. Would Jenna approve of what she wrote, she wondered. And now a word from Jenna's sister, Hannah. As Hannah heard those words, she began to shake a little. She shook her head as if to wake herself from the nightmare. Nothing, though. It was useless. This nightmare was just beginning. Hannah walked down the aisle towards the podium. She looked over at the pond and watched the koi fish swim past. She let the edges of her lips turn up just at the slightest as she remembered Jenna's love for nature. Jenna would have approved of the service location. Hannah reached the podium and set the eulogy down. She took in a deep breath as she looked out at her family for courage. Hannah began to feel a little nauseous and lightheaded. She gripped the side of the podium and took another deep breath. You got this, she thought, while looking down at the eulogy. Hannah cleared her throat and began to speak. Hello, and thank you all for coming to help us celebrate Jenna's life. Many summer afternoons, Jenna and I would spend in the backyard, spread out on blankets, trying to catch some sun. I will always remember her telling me, I have a hate-love relationship with the sun. She loved the way the sun would warm her and the beauty that it highlighted in the world. But she was very sensitive to the light and hated that part about the sun. Jenna loved to look up at the beauty, the beautiful blue sky with clouds sprinkled throughout. When you feel the sun warming your bodies, may you remember Jenna. Jenna loved animals, especially horses. She would often talk about how much she loved touching their noses. Jenna would say it was like velvet under her fingertips. She would volunteer at countryside stables on the weekends to spend time just being with the horses. She would even send me pictures of the horses while she was brushing or feeding them. Jenna truly enjoyed nature and all it had to offer. When you see a field of wildflowers, may you remember Jenna. Jenna had such a spirit that many did not get to see. She was very reserved and few truly were able to see what a brilliant person she was. In her spare time, Jenna had many hobbies. She enjoyed rock collecting from her walks in the trails. She even would polish the rocks in a tumbler. Jenna enjoyed going fishing along the river up the road from her house. Even though she always threw the fish back, Jenna also loved to go running although I'll never understand why. When you are walking along a trail, may you remember Jenna. In your memories, may Jenna be there with you, and may her laugh heal your heart. As Hannah finished the eulogy, she started to feel uneasy. Her hands were shaking with each breath she took. She could feel her chest becoming heavier. Hannah's breath was becoming shallow as her chest began to grow tighter. She could feel the sun's rays beating down on her like laser from the sky. The sweat became a waterfall running down her face as she felt the temperature increase. She could hear everyone talking, but they all sounded so far away from her. She tried to muster out, Ma, I feel strange, but it was a slur that was inaudible. All of a sudden, it was like a circle was enclosing around her until nothingness was left. Hannah? Ma shouted as Hannah hit the ground. Someone get some water, she ordered frantically. Ma rushed to Hannah's side and knelt down next to her. Autumn, do you want me to call the paramedics, Henry offered as he reached into his pocket for his cell phone. Henry was never good in emergency situations normally. Most of the time he would freeze up. I don't know, Ma quickly responded, trying to wake Hannah. Ma shook her body slightly back and forth. When Ma touched Hannah's arms, they were cool and sweaty. Hannah? She leaned down to make sure Hannah was still breathing. Now she checked her pulse. Hannah's pulse seemed weak, but still steady. Here you are, Esther said as she handed a glass of water to Ma. Ma grabbed the glass and threw it on Hannah's face, but it was no luck. She still didn't wake. Thinking back to her CPR and first aid courses, Ma thought what she should do next. 
Call the paramedics, Henry Ma yelled out. She realized that there was not much else she could do for Hannah at the moment. Ma could not handle losing another child. We need an ambulance. My niece has fainted. Yes, she's breathing. Okay. We're at Fraser Funeral Home? I understand. Thank you. Henry pulled the phone down from his face. The paramedics are on their way. Stay calm, he told everyone. And all they felt, all they really could do was wait again. Thank you again for listening to Chapter 2 of The Stranger Within by Kimberly Tracy. Please make sure to like and subscribe the video. And looking forward for Chapter 3 to release next Friday. Have a wonderful day and thank you again.